begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. It's Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. The country's on fire, baby! Yes, it's on fire. It's gonna go nuts, I'm telling you. If 2020 wasn't bad enough, this, I think, would be the powder keg that lights it all up. As you guys know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. And you know what? She was a trailblazer for the left. You know, we often forget this country's divided into tribes. And, you know, that was an icon for them. But with six weeks to go before the election, boy, they going nuts right now on the left, baby. They are pulling their hair out. They're threatening to burn, loot, riot, the whole nine yards. This was a gift, a gift to the right. McConnell has already said that they will be voting on Trump's next nomination. And hopefully they get him installed, or her, before the election. Because I'm going to make a prediction here. Trump's going to win in a landslide and a week later with these mail-in ballots. Because, you know, I'm from Chicago. Next thing you know, he's going to win and they're both not going to concede and it's going to go to the Supreme Court where it would be 4-4. That right there is a disaster for this country because it's going to go all up in flames at that point. Uh, the only way to prevent something like that is to get another justice on the court to decide what's going to happen. Everybody remembers what happened with the Bush-Gore thing with the 500 and the chads and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, it's going to be Trump's... Uh, pick that decides what's going to happen here uh wow man i seen that last night i was like holy shit here we go it's gonna get crazy you thought kavanaugh's was bad uh you know i think they're gonna try every possible way they can to do it now there is a justice on the top list she's a com uh, cuban american cuban american now where are those mostly at, the Cubans? Down in Florida. That would be the smartest pick that Trump has ever made. Pick her. She's a Cuban. She has the backing of the Cuban community down in Florida. Thems go after her. They lose Florida. Oh, it's nothing but political theater at this point, man. Pop the popcorn is what I say. And get ready, man. These guys are all butthurt on the left, man. Well, we're going to burn and riot. Well, go ahead. It was you idiots who were our gun control freaks. <laughs> Guess who has the guns, you morons? Uh, last night, uh, Antifa tried to uh, riot in Portland. And now that Trump uh, did that one operation with the cops, I guess they deputized locals. Boy, they swift and got it stopped it all right dead cold. You know, nothing's going good for the left. You know, you do have to worry about Murkowski. She's a moron. I can't wait. You know what? You people in Alaska need to vote her ass out. And then you got Collins, and then you got Romney. Dude's a freaking fake Republican, man. Everybody hates this guy. And I don't think he has a chance of being reelected uh, next time around. So those are the three you got to worry about. I would say Mansion and Cinema would have been, you know, pretty cool. But after the way they voted on impeachment, I actually think Mansion's uh, career is over when he comes up for reelection. West Virginia ain't going to deal with that. I got tons of family in West Virginia, and boy, were they pissed off about that one. Pissed off. Uh, you know, I know this is, you know, I always say this when I talk about stuff like this. This is biker news and stuff. But this is just too serious of a deal. 
This applies to everyone in this country and bikers. Bikers especially. We got a big voting block. Now what's going to happen is he's going to make his pick. They're going to start riding and all that stuff. And now they're going to lose the suburbs. Everybody is really tired of them. They are tired of the left. I seen uh, this one question during the town hall with Biden. Uh, the lady says, you know what? I got my Joe Biden sign up in the front yard, but you look around, there's a sea of Trump signs. That's what the media is not telling you. The media knows that, you know, this freaking empty vessel has no chance. I can't wait. Can't wait to the debate. One of the questions I would turn around and look at Biden because he's going to push. Well, we should wait till the, after the election. Okay, Joe, who's on the Supreme Court right now? I guarantee he wouldn't be able to answer that question. That would make him look like the biggest fool alive. But I think, you know, what do you guys think? Do you think this country is about to go through some hell? We thought it was bad with the COVID, the lockdowns, then the riots over that stupid stuff in Minnesota. And then uh, Wisconsin, you notice how they everybody you know cut off that riding stuff once their numbers were starting to drop, drop, drop. Again, I think this is a gift, man. And Trump came out today. He said, "Yep, I'm gonna nominate somebody, and I want to vote." <laughs> you gotta love this guy. He trolls them. He's a master troller. He really is. I need to take lessons from him to troll my haters. <laughs> but. Yeah, that was some news last night. I was actually, uh, I was actually uh, watching uh, the Hollywood and China Dial show because we pre-recorded it, we premiered it, and oh man, a lot of people love that one. Uh, Ten things you need to know about uh, having better, better sex for the both of you, something like that. Uh, but me and China Dial got pretty raw on that show. Then I see this come again uh, up on my screen. Ruth Bader Ginsburg just died. I was like. Uh-oh, damn. Now, call this a conspiracy theory, maybe. Maybe. I don't... I, you know what? You haven't seen her around forever. Do you think they were waiting for something like this? And she's already been dead? I don't know. And then she, her final wish was that the next president appoint her. That ain't your choice. The Constitution says that lies with the power of the president. Now they're saying, well, hypocrites, hypocrites, 2016. No, the American public elected a Republican majority to stand against Obama. Midterms, they expanded their power, meaning the country wanted them to do what's right. So no, it's not hypocritical. It's what the American people want, but them idiots in the Senate and in the, all these politicians don't get that the American people run this country. I'm quite surprised that the American people has let it get as bad as it has with these so-called representatives. You know all they're doing is uh, representing their own interest. We do not matter to them. If we mattered, there'd be another stimulus check out there. And you know what they're holding that up with in the Democratic House for? A bunch of liberal wish list crap that has nothing to do with how people are hurting right now in this country. That's what's going on. But the media is their propaganda arm. They don't even hide it anymore, man. They really don't. That Jake Tapper or whatever his name was trying to influence a race out east. Yeah, they don't even act like they have any damn freaking par impartiality anymore. It's just the way it is. They hate Trump, blah, 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 blah. The Republicans have to do this not only for the election because it's probably going to be contested. But they have to do it for their voter base. If they're not going to do their job, why should anybody vote for them? A lot of catch 22s going on here, baby. A lot of them. And I'm and you know what? You're probably going to have some Republicans defect because they're a bunch of cowards. You never ever see any Democrats freaking pass. It's always these freaking coward Republicans.
I say do your job for this country. Now, can you imagine if they get a 6-3? I still think it's going to be a 5-4 because Roberts is just a schluck. But they can finally get some gun control cases to the Supreme Court and cement the Second Amendment. Now they're going to be going around crying and whining about abortion. And by the way, you know, I wonder if she's hearing all the voices of all those unborn right now. I'm just not going to get any farther into that statement. But, you know, just wanted to put that out there. So I know the monologue right now has a lot to do with this. But I think it is the most important story in the country going on. It is going to be amazing to see how this all freaking pans out. Serious stuff, man. This is some sad state of affairs. It's just, you know what, with leftists and their threats and stuff, they're illogical. Most of them are being paid. So how much of, you know... Patriots, they're not getting paid to uh, stand for what they believe in, but them morons on the left always do. But what are your thoughts on what's happening right now? Let me hear them, man. I know you guys have some kind of thoughts. Make sure to put them in the comment section at on all of our platforms because this is going to be the biggest thing going on this week. I get, uh, You know what? Every day something's going to go on. Let uh, me know what you think. Uh, pound, rock on, pound, dark side. And if you don't know what it means, uh, pound, dark side, we've had people say that we should only put the light out there. We should only put the good about what's going on in the scene. Well, that's not us. We uh, handle what's going on through the news. We give our opinions. And a lot of it's dark. So pound dark side, baby. We ain't embarrassed of what we do here. We believe we give a service to the community to keep them informed. It's up to them, then, to make their own decisions. It's always funny. When I read some of these stories, there's people that don't like them. And then there's people that put their opinion, hey, the club shouldn't have been doing this or that. One thing is for sure, and there's a story coming out on this, uh, oh, anyway, about another subculture within the biker community. A lot of people are going to shake their heads and go, oh my god, really? But yeah, we have so many different subcultures. That's what makes this whole thing about riding motorcycles, partying, Great! It really does. That's what I like is to see people from all different backgrounds enjoying the same one, congregating around motorcycles that bring us all together. That is the best thing about this. So yeah, when I read the biker news, you might have people in one group say, you know what, they deserve what the hell they get. Look what they were doing. They're making us all look bad. Or another group that thinks, hey, wait a second, the cops, Leo, and all that stuff, they keep on going at them, keep on going at them. And then there's even the third one, which, you know, I, I have to say to this guy, you know, he is a Leo. He's on the platform. He's in a Leo MC, I believe. But at least he tries to debate, going back and forth. Some things he don't agree with what the cops do. Some he does. He disagrees with me. Sometimes he doesn't. That's what I like doing is the debate. But he brought up the fact that I was outraged with what happened in L.A. With the two cops. I was. I was. You know what? You do not have to break bread. You do not have to sit and have a beer with a cop. To know that was wrong. Like I told him, you know, I'm of the old thinking, man. Uh, cops, it's their job to catch us if we're doing something stupid. We don't have any beers with you. We don't break bread. We don't talk with you. You're on that side. We're on this side. That's the way it's always been. 
But at the same time, you know what? Two human beings got shot. If you guys notice, I don't like seeing people get hurt for anything. If you're going to talk about an eye for an eye, then make sure it's an eye for an eye. If somebody gets their ass handed to them, then the appropriate response would be go hand that ass to somebody else. If one guy gets shot, well then, the appropriate response would be indeed shoot back. But when it comes to somebody trying to do their jobs and go home to their families and that happens, that right there is not eye for an eye. Especially what them damn protesters did, going to the hospital, acting all stupid. That is what's revving this country up right now. Well, racist this, right? No, wait a second. That right there is what's going to cause all the race stuff. You're going to have white boys coming out and giving hell. You're going to have a lot of people not sitting back for that kind of crap. So... Let's get into the biker news. Hopefully you guys like my monologue. Oh boy, is this an exciting time in America, baby. It really is. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. M-B-F-N-E-W-S. It's like M-S-N-B-C. Remember that? W-M-B-F. No, anyway. South Carolina Department of Revenue seeks to revoke Murals Inlet Biker Bars Alcohol License. Let's take a look. Has obtained documents from the Department of Revenue that say popular biker bar SBB is in jeopardy of losing all of its alcohol and beverage licenses. Those documents say it all stems from how SBB conducted business during Myrtle Beach Bike Week Spring Rally. The documents allege that SBB advertised extensively about live concerts they were hosting and say SBB did not take any measure to comply with the governor's executive orders. According to these documents, the Department of Revenue has determined that SBB committed a criminal violation against the executive order that classified concert venues and nightclubs as non-essential businesses and posed an immediate threat to the public's health, safety, and welfare. Because of these determinations, the Department of Revenue says that revoking all of SBB's alcohol and beverage licenses and permits is the appropriate penalty. The DOR says SBB has the ability to request a contested case hearing. Now, WMBF Investigates has reached out to SBB's general manager, who says he didn't have a comment on it. And as far as he knows, they're still operating business as usual. We'll continue to follow up for more information as it becomes available. For now, in studio, Madison Martin, WMBF Investigates. You know what? That's the biggest horse shit I have ever heard. An executive order is not the law. Is not a law. And I'm so tired of these people saying, oh, you know, you guys could have, uh, you know, affected public safety. Well, you know, here it is, September 19th, oh, way over a month and a half, you know, from when Sturges happened. And we only heard one death so far. One death. Stop letting these people control you. That is why it's very important to stop voting just for party. Vote for the person, man. Stop with the freaking decades upon decades of crap because it don't work. Here in Chicago, there has not been a Republican mayor in over 100 years. And look how bad my beautiful cities run right now. Beetlejuice is destroying it. Why? Because you got a D after your name. It's time to vote for what's good for you. There is no reason whatsoever that they should revoke this license. Don't you think small businesses have been affected enough from these people? All these governors are millionaires, multi-millionaires. They do not care about you. 
when will you realize that? It's the small business that actually employs most people. So they're going to go after the liquor license of this uh, place. For one, I don't believe in liquor license. Nobody should be licensing that. They just do it to get their cut. But no person at this bar should lose their job over this freaking moronic BS. People live free in this country. I know the left and all you Democrats, as I call it, think we should live in a socialist society or sit over there and kumbaya tree hug each other's peckers. But that ain't reality. The reality is this country is the way it is because of the blood of a lot of patriots. And this right here is absolutely horse crap. If you guys are in South Carolina, make sure you get out there and help this bar. Now, ABC 47. Bikers gather in Ocean City despite bike week cancellation. Interesting. Daniel, thank you. This year's Ocean City Bike Week may have been canceled, but that's not stopping people from hopping on their bikes and making their way to the beach town to participate in something they're now calling the OC Underground Bike Rally. Hell 47 yeah. ABC's Hannah Jagini has more on how the town is preparing and why some are still choosing to stay home. Even though Ocean City's Bike Week is officially canceled, town officials say that a number of bikers are still in town this weekend. The official Bike Week was canceled, mainly due to the COVID restrictions. Uh, the police department has been monitoring that there is an unofficial Bike Week going on through social media. Deputy Communications Director for the Ocean City Police Department, Ashley Miller, says that the department is not particularly concerned about this unofficial event and will not have any additional officers on the streets. We welcome everybody in town, and it is unfortunate that with the COVID restrictions, a lot of the normal events that Ocean City's visitors and residents are accustomed to seeing has been canceled this year. Some bikers say that even though they're disappointed about Bike Week being canceled, they don't feel like the unofficial event is worth the risk. I have people I love, I have family. Some of them are immunocompromised, some of them are older than me. I don't want to get them sick. But I don't want to go to any more funerals. I don't want to die either. Kim Vallejo says that she usually participates but in events no. like Bike Week, but this year she's being more cautious. The spirit's still alive, but I just can't see going and and uh, coming back and being a, a spreader. I mean, if I don't have it, suppose I, I, I infect someone's grandmom or kid. Meanwhile, Miller tells 47 ABC that the bikers are still more than welcome to visit Ocean City as they do every year, but she just reminds them to be safe when it comes to COVID-19. Everybody that comes to town, we always welcome them, and we just ask that all participants, whether they're here for an official event or an unofficial event, respects our community. Hannah Cicchini, 47 ABC. Here you go on that the there. The organizer of the OC Underground Bike Rally tells us that there are a number of activities lined up, including live music. She says that so far, the unofficial events have drawn a huge response on social media. There you go, guys. Kill them over there, boys. Uh, that was a butch if you ever asked me. Oh, no. Next story. I'm going to get kicked in the balls for this one. Uh, biker clubs and queer history. Stories of rebel queers, <laughs> St. Louis. Okay, I'm gonna try to make the, uh, you know, make it through this. You know, I did say there's different subcultures in the biker community, so I'm gonna really try here. Okay, guys. Elizabeth Van Winkle. This at a out is international. It looks like. Uh, there's a picture of Giggy and Missy Tyson. There you are. Uh. 2003, where you're a young queer person from Southern Illinois. That actually isn't the best place to be, is in Southern Illinois doing that. Uh, in the big city for your first ever Pride Parade. You're scared shitless. Horny as hell. <laughs> okay, horny as yeah. All right, I am trying to look cool. You've managed to score prime real estate on the parade route because in your nervousness, you accidentally showed up two hours early. Eventually, other LGBTQIA 
A, I have no idea what that means. People start trudging up next to you, complaining that uh, the parade always starts way too early, and that they and everyone there uh, with are totally hungover and that they might throw up. Interesting! <laughs> this is the most thrilling conversation you ever heard in your life. Well, I guess, you know, if you're... Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, hmm. Suddenly, you hear a noise that is getting the crowd excited, but you can't make it out. Whatever it is, it's really loud, and it ain't no marching band. The noise starts to reverberate in your chest as it gets closer, and the women around you start to go wild. Well, they do walk around with Tinkerbell dresses and stuff. I, you know, uh, you know what? I really don't think this is the best story for me to go over. I kind of have, you know, extreme viewpoints on this kind of stuff. Uh, all I can tell you is, yeah, there's that subsection. You know what? I got to move on right here. Uh, <laughs> I can't do it. I tried, but I can't. Uh, Lake of the Ozarks, Biker Fest, The Next Sturges? Big City Media Keep Getting It Wrong. By Nathan Bechtel. The wife and I made a quick trip to St. Louis on Wednesday at lunch with a hearkening for some big city quality sushi. You know what? This is the new biker. Now we're eating sushi. We found the place that looked good, but were bewildered to discover when we walked to the entrance they were open only for curbside carryout. I had known this would be, poss uh, be a possibility, but found myself... Freshly annoyed. Uh-oh. Don't piss off the rub. Back home at the Lake of the Ozarks, everything's open. Call me spoiled. Rather than sort out the sushi situation, we sh <laughs> You know what? Yeah, I, I just don't like this one. What do you guys think? You know, is the Ozarks Bike Fest the next there? Just let me know. Man, what is it with yuppies in these? Yeah. Oh, my God. What the hell today, guys? Uh, <laughs> now a normal story for me. Uh, Washington Herald, uh, Washington, Indiana, drug raids take pounds of meth trade in southern Illinois, or Indiana. Eat freaking meth, man. Uh, yeah. Anyway, a raid by federal law enforcement agents in Evansville is having reverberations in the drug trade that reaches from Davis County to Mexico. U.S. Attorney for the Southern Indiana, Josh Mickler, announced the raids in Evansville that led to the arrest of 17 people, most of them members of the Grim Reapers Motorcycle Club. Drugs, guns, and money have been taken off our streets, said Minkler. This is big news. This is a big win. The raids in Evansville resulted in the confiscation of 23 weapons, the seizure of thirty-five thousand dollars. Why don't? Why does everybody keep the money around them? You know, you always keep the money separate from where you're at. Easy stuff. Recovery of ten pounds of methamphetamine with a street value of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, this is a huge victory for us," said Drug Enforcement Agent Mike Gannon. Quote, we've going to identify every single one of you pushing this poison in our community. You know what? It is actually poison. I can't stand meth. Can't do it. Uh, what's wrong with just smoking weed, people? We're going to use every re resource we can and hold you accountable and put you where you belong in jail. The raid is expected to have an impact on the drug trade in Davis County. Uh, we do not have a direct link that we can trace to that group, but anytime you can take a large amount of meth like that off the street in our region, it will have an impact. Um, so yeah, you're going to have a bunch of freaking Fenian meth heads looking around for meth now. Uh, I am certain that if we were able to trace back the small bags that we recover, that some of it would lead back to Evansville. Officials say Central Holman, uh, the, what is it, the 6th, 28th, uh, was the ringleader of the operation. Most of those arrested live in Evansville or Orangeboro uh, along, uh, although one man uh, was also swept in the raid. Uh, the arrest and raid in Evansville were part of a larger set of indictments on drug operations that reached into California and Mexico. 
Eleven defendants were indicted at Emmonsville on charges of conspiracy to possess with the intent to distribute 500 grams or more of methamphetamine and fentanyl. Uh, quote, drug trafficking op organizations operate on greed and takes advantage of the addiction problem uh, this community, our state, and nation faces. This illegal activity cannot and will not be tolerated. I am fully committed. My office is fully committed. And the federal, state, and local law enforcement partners are fully committed to help stop the flow of narcotics into this state and this community. Why not federalize, legalize marijuana? Stop this shit. Authorities say res investigation resulted in seizures of 123 pounds of meth, 769 grams of fentanyl, 114 fentanyl pills, 500 oxycodone pills, holy crap, 345 grams of heroin, and 14 Gs. Oh, wow. Uh, anyway, they conclude the aim of these types of investigation is to remove illegal narcotics and violent drug dealers from our community and country. You know, well, there wouldn't be violence uh, with the drug trade if you guys would just legalize everything, man. Didn't you guys learn from the El Capone days? Anyway, DailyFreeman.com Orange County drug trafficking conspiracy gets up to 18 years in prison! A former fire chief who was a member of a self-proclaimed outlaw motorcycle club. You mean pop-up club, just say it. Self-proclaimed. I guess, you, you know, you can fit that into a lot of places. That traffic in narcotics has been sentenced up to 18 years in prison. Hey, I'm a former fire chief, man. You're letting me down here, boys. You know, you know we love our firefighters, but you, you're a douchebag. Uh, Robert Durham, 47, was sentenced Tuesday by Orange County Judge Craig Brown in the case dub Operation Red, White, and Blues. Where the hell did you come up with a name like that? He said Durham was sentenced to nine years in prison and five years of post-release supervision for the felony of criminal sale of a controlled substance and six to 18 years in prison for felony conspiracy. The sentences will run concurrently. Indictments arising out of uh, Operation Bread, White, and Blues outline two separate conspiracies. One involving members and associates of motorcycle clubs trafficking cocaine. The other involving the sale of narcotic pills that were represented to contain oxycodone, but actually contain fentanyl. Dummies. Durham, who was chief of uh, a fire department in the town of Wallkill, was alleged to have been a member of both conspiracies. The name of here we are going to we're going to learn where it came from. The name of the operation referred to the defendant's use of the term "bread" to mean money they obtained from drug sales, white to represent the cocaine that was sold, and blues to represent blue pills that were being trafficked. You guys couldn't come up with anything better than that. And why don't you stay off the damn phones and the internet when you're doing this kind of stuff if you're going to do it? Most of the defendants were arrested in a series of raids and warrant executions. Duram pleaded guilty on the 25th, uh, admitted he sold over two ounces of cocaine. The, uh, so two ounces of cocaine, he's going to jail for 18 years. Uh, the Operation Bread, White, and Blues arrested uh, resulted in the recovery of more than 500000 in cash, 25 handguns, one assault rifle, multiple rifles, 10 vehicles, two motorcycles, over 2.5 pounds of coke, and 1,300 fentanyl pills. Damn, man, self-proclaimed outlaw club moving there, baby. Holy shit. A lot of movement for uh, somebody who's a pop-up. Anyway, we're going to go back, and I'm going to give you, because like, people are going to say, no, they didn't. Well, here it is. SCOTUS battle props threats. Calls for arson. Burn Congress down. If they try to replace RGB, we burn the entire effing thing down. Hmm. Let's see here. Reza Eslin. <laughs> you know what's so tough on the you know what do you know these idiots aren't the ones that you know are out there doing the writing because they're a bunch of freaking punks 
That guy, you just see it from the Twitter feed. He's a punk. If they even try to replace RGB, we and burn the entire effing thing down. Author Rezan Elzentri. Who the hell are you? Anyway, dude, I don't know who you are. What'd you write? He later responded, uh, vowed to hold a vote on uh, over the dead bodies, blah, blah, blah. A Canadian political science professor. What the hell you even have to do with our country? You, you stay with your stuff up north, man. We don't want to hear you. You're making Canucks look bad, you schmuck. Uh, Ginsburg death came just weeks before the presidential election and opened the opportunity for Republicans to dramatically shift power on the Supreme Court by confirming other conservative judges. Democrats long criticized McConnell of hypocrisy, but I gave you the way I look at it. Uh, he's maintained, however, that Garland's confirmation was unique in that the Senate and the executive branch were controlled by different parties. That isn't the case in wake of Ginsburg death. The incredibly high stakes prompted what appeared to be panicked reactions from many on Twitter. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> A uh, member of uh, Wisconsin Ethics Commission, Scott Ross, ordered Senator Ed Markey D. to burn it all down if he couldn't stop McConnell. Fucking A, Ed. If you can't shut it down, burn it down. Oh, man, you guys are going to hand the election to us, man. You know what? I always hate liberals. You, you wonder why. Freaking tree hugging, you know what? Anyway, let's go to my final thoughts, everybody, before I get nuts here. Okay, we're back, and you know what? While we were on break, China now calls me. I said, okay, what's up? How you doing? You, you're you not going to believe what I just seen. I said, okay, what? what did you, you know, because I hate that stuff when I'm doing commercial stuff. And you got to say, okay, just tell me instead of, well, guess what? what? What do you mean, guess what? You know, I don't know where the hell you're at. But anyway, she was driving by a gas station and seen an Iron Order member there. Dressed in nothing but neon freaking green. I was like, did you take a picture, man? She's like, I couldn't believe it. This dude had a neon helmet on, neon shirt, neon pants. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that one right now. You know, this was a pretty difficult segment for me. Couple freaking articles there. I usually try to get them through all of them. But that pride thing okay yeah i know they're they got a you know their own subculture within our stuff uh but why you gotta be so nasty man this is like butch you know hey whatever you do in your bedrooms what you do in your bedroom i do not care you're still a human being you know what am i talking about china dolls by but she brings some uh, she gets some hot ass women man she never goes with no butch. What the hell is wrong with you people? Get something nice looking. Yeah, but I just can't get through articles like that. You know, a lot of people call me, uh, what is that, uh, homophobe. Hey, you know what? Women on women, that's good. But men on men, that's not good, man. That's not good. That's disgusting. You know, women are natural at that kind of stuff. You know, they're sensitive, emotional. They fit together. But at least get somebody that looks like a girl, not no butch. And hey, uh, you know what? I'm not trying to be, you know, mean about it. Uh, then that other female, you know, sometimes I don't like rubs representing us. Okay? Because, you know, when you're a kid, you look up the bikers, you know, they got the tattoos, the beard, and they look all cool and stuff. And then you get these people out there representing us like, man, no, just stop. Okay, just stop. You know, uh, next time they ask you, you're a motorcycle enthusiast. Please. Please. Because, you know, with this social media crap, I ain't no man. You know, actually, I got freaking sent a video of the schluck that I call him. 
uh, talking about honor, loyalty, how people don't know what it means. Here's this dude talking this shit. And I can guarantee you that dude don't know what it is. He's a conniving little prick. Or big prick, if you want to know. Uh, has some road in a decade and stuff like that and still thinks he's a biker. I don't know what the hell's going on with it. But anyway, you know, that's just the people. And my stalker. Oh my god, I got to stalk. Those are the people that represented us now? Jesus Christ, if that's the way it's going to be, nobody's going to want to be in a biker anymore. Nobody. You know, there's a, there's a certain or about what it is to be a biker. You know, there's an image that you got to uphold. These people ain't upholding that image. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Again, I have nothing against motorcycle enthusiasts. What I do have is when you have rubs that go in the media and make us look stupid. I don't like being look stupid. So, there's an underground event. Awesome, that's what we do. It's about freedom, isn't it? It ain't about freaking cowering down to the government. No, we go out there, we party, do our thing. Well, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Okay, get somebody else, please. Get somebody else, because if you're going to interview somebody, get somebody else. Then, you have this incident in South Carolina. They're going to go after this bar's freaking license because the media is too busy on the cocks of Democrats. Oh, you disobeyed this executive order. Wait a second, I thought we lived in a country where there is laws. Where they are voted on by the representatives of the people. We do not have dictators. These are the same people that are driving small businesses out of business. Who the hell wants to support anybody like that? Oh, you got your tree huggers on the left, that do. Man, you know what? It, it, it's even hard to look at them. Okay, I'm sorry, it is. They ain't the best looking people. They really ain't. They need to get laid, but they ain't good looking. So it's even hard to look at them. They're hard on the eyes. And then, uh, you know, they get all stupid with their belief systems because people don't like looking at them. They're ugly. They can't get laid. I truly believe that is what their problem is. Truly do. But to go after that bar's freaking liquor license is... <laughs> Again, I don't even believe... You know what? Because the government always can control what you're doing and that's not the role of the government. You have a right to the American dream and not get any interference from them pricks. That's why a lot of people like small government. Oh boy, are they even left these pissed off, huh? <laughs> Dude, I, I have to giggle all the time now. Because whatever, they're always outraged. And you notice these Hollywood elites, they're the ones who are the most outraged, even though everybody don't give a shit what they have to say. They think they got some kind of control or power. But nobody cares less of what the hell they have to say. It's like, why even open your damn mouth, man? Who cares what you got, you're you saying, man? You're, you're an idiot. That share meathead. You know meathead from freaking, uh, what is that, uh, Archie, Archie Bunker? Uh, that dude. Yeah, who cares about what you have to say, meathead? You're a, jo you're a joke. So, you know, we're going to be contending with a lot of stuff coming uh, this November, man. It's going to be a wild ride. Uh, that one story about uh, the Grim Reapers being taken down for all that stuff, man. You know what? Stop making people look bad. You know, I'm huge 420, man. I really am. I do not understand why people want to do meth or fentanyl, heroin, all that stupid crap. All that's doing is ruining your lives, ruining the lives of your families. And anybody that sells that crap, you know what? Go jump off a building. Do something. Save us all the headaches and the problems that is caused by that crap. And just go. You're making motorcycle clubs look bad. It isn't bad enough there's, you know, all these other problems in this country. You have to do that. That does not help motorcycle uh, profile. And I actually had a guy 
claimed to be, uh, what was it, a pagan, said, well, we don't care what independents think. We don't care what citizens think. Okay? Now, if that's your stance, here's the other end. If you don't care what people think, then why in the hell do you try to enlist the help of independents, biker rights organizations, if you're just going to keep on doing the shit you're doing? That right there is hypocrisy. If you don't care what everybody else thinks, then why should we give a hell what you think? Think about that for a second. You can't come and ask for help when you're putting a crap on yourself. You're doing the shit to put it on yourselves. Just saying, man. That was just uh, my reply to that one guy that uh, put that on the uh, comment section. If you guys ever go through our YouTube stuff, check out the comment section, man. You'll really have fun, <laughs> let me tell you. You know, we have our regulars, which I love to death, and, you know, I don't. I, people don't need to agree with me, but don't put some stupid crap up like that that I'm going to tear apart. You well, they don't care about you. We don't. We don't care. Okay, then don't ask me to help you in this and that. That's what I have to say. I don't care then, because you don't care about us. Anyway, don't forget the Hollywood in China Dow show Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah, we get some whacked ass topics over there. You know, some people uh, text me, email me like, damn, man. Yeah, I got it going on, man. I'm living the life, baby. Uh, but uh, I'm going to cut the show. I just got a motorcycle lift, man. Went and got a motorcycle lift and got to set that up. I'm doing a bar in the garage. Uh, the whole nine yards, man. I, I do got to get a heater for the garage, though, because it gets freaking cold up here all the time. Something I don't like. Anyway, you guys take care. I'll talk to you on the next episode. Your show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!